trying to introduce the study of the brain to a bunch of students. I said, if understanding everything you needed to know about the brain is a mile, I asked the students, how far had we walked in this mile? I got answers, three quarters of a mile, half a mile, someone said a quarter of a mile, and I said, I think about three inches. This is unconventional science. There's just this huge gap in our knowledge about how brains work, largely because we have no idea what they actually are made up of at the finest level. When it comes to the nervous system, there are a large number of diseases where the only real sign that there's something wrong is the outward manifestation of the disease. A person is acting crazy, or they don't seem to learn very well, or their movements are disordered in some way. But if you look at their brain, most of the techniques we have, there's nothing to see. You've got to see the wires. You just have to see them, and you have to see where they come from, where they go, what they connect with, and be able to map that out in enough detail that ultimately you will be able to render the information that goes into a brain to see the wiring diagram at the resolution of every single synaptic vesicle in every synapse. Enough resolution, we think, to see everything in a wiring diagram. I'm a lab head of a group of people who work together. It's kind of a shifting group of people, but um, it's difficult work, and it requires many kinds of experts. So there are lots of people working together on this project. What we're trying to understand is how cells in the brain communicate with each other. I have to look at the entire pipeline from the beginning where we start with a mouse, make a sample, process the tissue, cut sections, and then ultimately begin imaging them. A slice is like you're cutting a loaf of bread, except you're trying to slice very thin pieces of, of, of tissue. So for a millimeter depth, you get about 33,000 sections. Each section of the brain is next to the section that was sliced just before it, and the slice right after it is the next frame. And if you play these frames in sequence, you see the brain not over time, but over space, as if you're looking deeper and deeper into the brain. The big objects you see that appear and then slowly go out of appearance, those are nerve cells that are being cut through. And coming off of these cells are these large, light-colored objects, which are the dendrites. Every little object in here is a little wire. To keep track of these cells from one section to another, what you'd like to do is kind of color them in. So every one of these colors have no meaning other than to keep track of each object from section to section. What this allows us to do is to generate a wiring diagram based on this. We're now looking at a slab that's about a tenth of a millimeter in height of a small piece of brain where some of those nerve cells, they're now all kind of pink in color, are interposed with blood vessels. And then a bunch of other things, these yellowish objects, are the processes that come off of nerve cells called dendrites. These are the antennas of nerve cells that receive information. Now looking at a box that's 10 microns, which is about a hundredth of a millimeter in height. And now you see that even between the dendrites of cells, which are labeled yellow, there are lots of other things that are labeled blue, which are the axons of nerve cells from other parts of the brain that happen to be trying to make connections with the nerve cells, the dendrites. We're gonna zoom up by another factor of three in this box. Now we finally see the places where the axons of some cells are beginning to communicate with the dendrites of other cells. And axons and dendrites talk to each other through synapses. Synapses are where axons of some neurons are making connections with the dendrites of other cells. And the way axons tell dendrites things is by releasing neurotransmitter 
packets that have hundreds or thousands of neurotransmitter molecules. These little packets are called synaptic vesicles and they're labeled here as little yellow spheres. The brain is made up of trillions of these synapses. One of our goals is to try to get some sense of what kinds of organizational principles emerge looking at the brain at the level of resolution of seeing every single synapse. Information forces you into this uncomfortable position where you have to kind of say, okay, I don't get it, but I know that the real world is more complicated than the way I'm thinking about it. I feel it's a very long road and we've just started. That's my view.